Good morning. <laughs> it is 7 a.m. and I was up at like quarter to six, right? But I had to take care of the baby before I came out in the garden. It is the 4th of July and yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty day. Um, and so I'm out in the garden real quick because we're going to my in-laws to eat. <laughs> We don't really celebrate 4th of July. I don't think we've ever celebrated 4th of July. We just kind of got, it was a reason to get together and eat, right? And see each other. Um, but anywho, so I'm in the garden. I'm just looking to see how things are going. And um, and then I'm going to do some work. So I planted some zucchini about a week ago, some zucchini seeds. And they have come up. They're looking great. And so I'm going to let y'all see those. And then um, I'm going to separate the seedlings. Um, right now I got them in a 10 gallon, I think it's a 10 gallon pot. Um, so I'm going to leave one plant in that pot. I probably could leave two, but I'm going to do one because sometimes I've grown zucchini and squash in a five gallon bucket before and it did just fine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. Oh, these pepper plants are looking so pretty. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and separate the seedlings and find other places for them to be in the garden um it looks like i'm gonna have to pull up the squash plant over there i'll show you in a minute but it stopped producing and i was like the first thing that popped in my head was dang the vine borer so it was probably the vine borer that got to it um i'm, a, I'm a, and i saw some evidence of that so i'll show you that real quick as well but here are the seedlings they are looking quite healthy already have a, uh, the first set of their true leaves so for or the first true leaf so the, for beginner gardeners so these are the two sprouts here um, these are the two leaves that come up when the seed sprouts and there's the first true leaf and there's another one about to come out there so this is uh, black beauty zucchini and so um, all the seedlings look pretty strong. There's uh, one, two, three, four total. So I have, I can toss them all, pick the strongest one, the prettiest one, the one that looks like it's going to do well, um, keep it in the pot and toss the rest, or I can repot them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to repot these. Um, and probably, I don't have a lot of buckets left, so I'll probably just put them in some gallon pots until I find another place for them to go. Um, but the gallon pot will give me some time to do that. Um, so actually I do have a couple more 10 gallon pots. So I don't know. We'll see. Look at how beautiful these pepper plants look. Those are sweet potato vines. Uh, there are sweet potato slips or plants. Um, so we might have some sweet potato. I don't know. I planted them kind of late, so we'll see. Um, uh, but look at how beautiful that pepper plant is it's so cute and just green and like deep uh, like this deep green and there's a fruit on it let's see if I can see uh oh what um, sorry I've got these gloves on it's hard to look at how pretty um, see what this is <laughs> I bought this at the store and this is a Orange bell pepper. Okay. Orange bell. I bought this one at the store too. So let's see. I'm trying to. I'm, all the peppers I grew are in the garden. This is a green bell. So it's looking great. Uh, bell peppers can be pollinated just like that. There's no male and female flowers. Um, this is a. This one I did grow myself. This is a giant Marconi pepper. No fruit yet, but the plant looks delish. Ooh, look at that. This is a, I grew this one myself. This is a Jimmy Nardello here. That looks like a jalapeno there. Let's see. Ooh. A uh, sweet banana, sorry. And then... This is 
got this has fruit on it too they're looking great uh, this is Cuban ale okay so that's all my peppers in containers right now and um, so they're looking great so you might have seen some like brown flowers on some of the plants um, like this one and that's just because when it gets hot um, sometimes the flowers dry up and die it's no biggie they'll set more so I'm going to make sure these guys are watered in today and one way I check to see if they need to be watered is I try to pick the bucket up and if it feels quite heavy that may give me a clue I also move back the mulch and stick my finger down just like that to see and if the soil isn't really sticking to my glove at all then it probably needs to be watered now it's hard to tell with gloves on or I meant sticking on my finger but I'm also going to dig down and just do this flip the soil under and it seems pretty and I went down pretty you know the length of my finger um, and it looks pretty dark so we might be good with watering actually yep um, and you can do that in every pot use your best judgment you know whatever but that's how I check to see if it needs watering sometimes I can tell that I've overwatered if my plants look kind of green and purplish this may be a overwatering and this five gallon pot is pretty heavy it's heavy on its own anyway right but I'm gonna check again um, mm, so sometimes I think I've overwatered this to be all honest um, this is a white tomasil tomato but um, so I'm gonna let it go again it rained pretty hard and decent about three days ago two days ago and so I might just give it a minute that also may tell me the way that plant looks that I need to fertilize it just a bit because it's not as green as I would like it to be where in the heck am I gonna put all of these okra plants who this raspberry is looking kind of sparse I've either overwatered it or I watered it when it's hot and uh, the leaves got burnt up because I watered it during the wrong time of the day I don't know this one looks pretty decent so I'm not sure what what's going on <laughs> the Armenian cucumbers are looking really well and they have tendrils finally so um, you see the tendrils so and this one's flowering so we'll be having some fruit very very soon so what I'm gonna do is make sure that those tendrils um, um, hit that trellis right so that they um, grab the trellis and then climb climb up all the way up and we got some fruit dangling from from the cattle panel that's the idea these plants are looking really well these are the ones I transplanted and they're looking good um, Again, so you see that brown, those brown leaves, that's probably from watering in the heat of the day or something, I don't know. But uh, you can just take them off. Just use some pruners and clip them off um, or pinch them off with your fingers. <sighs> Blessed be the squirrels. Look at this mess. Look at this mess. I mean just messy messy and disrespectful I mean at least if you're gonna come to somebody's house look at this at least if you're gonna come to somebody's house clean up after yourself look at that mess <laughs> so here's the uh, yellow squash plant that I pulled those couple of squash off and then the squirrels got the rest so it's actually starting to flower which is a good sign I've never seen um, this stuff is powdery mildew the white stuff on the leaves. It's a disease. Okay, and so I'll probably end up pulling this out anyway But I also this is not evidence of the vine borer. This is 
Look at that. See how that uh, stem is all yellow and it looks like something's eating it or, or whatever. Yep. So I have a vine borer, which is going to eventually cause this plant to die. And um, there's a few fruit coming on. I might leave it just to see what happens. I mean, I know what's going to happen. I know that uh, this plant is eventually going to die. Because the vine borer sets, um, it's a flying insect that, um, that, I'm sorry, lays eggs at the stem of the plant. And then the larvae are inside of the plant. They barrel inside of the plant. And they eat the plant from the inside out. So, it eventually kills your kills your plant. Now, there's ways to try to prepare, uh, repair the stem. You can dig and get the larvae out. All of that. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I've done that before in the past. Y'all have been gardening for almost a decade in my adulthood. <sighs> I'm just not. I just, I've tried it all. I've tried putting aluminum foil on the stems. Try to put cinnamon and pepper spray on the stems i've tried all kinds of stuff and it doesn't mean it doesn't work because it did work sometimes but it's just a lot of work and i really don't have time for all this labor um what i need to do is just plant more and then uh and and probably hand pollinate in my area everybody doesn't have problems with the vine borer but in my area i do and so um, if I chose to grow these in, in a larger scale, on a larger scale, even if it's 10 plants or 20 plants, you know, um, I'd probably need to hand pollinate myself and then cover them with um, some netting, or not netting, some um, uh, row cover or some type of mesh cloth. That way the vine borer can't get in and lay eggs. Um, I'm not going to speak of the other insect that typically affects this because I haven't seen a whole lot of them. And I'm scared if I call that out, I probably already jinxed myself, right? By just saying that much, that they'll be here. But they usually show up. <laughs> if y'all know what I'm talking about, leave it in the comments so everybody else can know. So in this bed here, I planted some t uh, tomatoes and basil. Um, basil is supposed to be a great companion plant to tomatoes and it's supposed to help deter pests. But I like putting it in anyway. And people like to eat tomatoes and basil together. And it seems like every, everything is doing well. Um, I also planted um, a fall crop of Swiss chard. Swiss chard is also pretty heat tolerant. So I just went ahead and, and those seedlings are coming up. And I had some help planting the Swiss chard. I can't remember who helped me. Um, I think it was a volunteer group. Um, but I planted the first row here that's coming up. And uh, can y'all see the plants? Sort of right there. And then they plant. They helped me plant the rest along here. Um, so they're up and looking good. Got some sprouting. Um, and these are turnips that are still left. Purple top turnips. They're still left from the spring or, you know, early planting in the spring. They look great. These turnip greens right here could be picked and eaten. Yeah. Look at those beautiful greens. They could be picked and eaten. So, anywho, this mound of mess, I still got to get the weed eater and I'm going to just chop it all down to the ground. Uh, but yeah, I need to get it before it starts to go to seed. It's already flowering, so. And like filled with powdery mildew, right? You see all that white stuff? Yeah. All right, here's the purple, uh, well, red burgundy bush beans. And let's see. Um, oh, okay. Those look good. Look at those plants coming up. Let's see how many I got here. The more you pick, the more it puts on. And I have not picked since I had a volunteer pick. And he took all of them home with him. Which is cool. It was one of the teen groups that I had here. And I need to I need to get in here and pick more. Um, oh, look. Look at there. Yeah. So I'm about to harvest these this morning. And we can maybe take them. And the family can eat those. But alright, y'all. I just wanted to show you a few things. I hope everybody is doing well and uh have a good day y'all have a great day 
if you're out with your family still be careful COVID's still around you know you know but it's cool to get together and see each other because this past year has been hard on everybody um and i just wish y'all the best i love y'all so much i'll holler at you later peace